Fire is actually uh, a bigger project and it's gone across three schools across the North West. So the, the three trainee teachers and artists are here today just to show you a bit about the project. We chose to use, or try to introduce at a basic level, computer programming to kids. Now, when people say straight away, you know, oh, we're going to be learning computer programming, or if you even say to somebody else, we're good today, we're going to be doing computer programming, I guarantee the majority of us will just freeze and go, oh my God, that's going to be, you know, so, so hard to do. You say that to a bunch of year nines, they're willing to take on the world with it, you know, they're not frightened at all to kind of jump in, who's a programmer? Of course I am. Hands straight up, no problem. So what we got them to do initially was that we, we used this program to kind of say, well, let's see if we can kind of bombard you with a lot of information and a lot of code and see if at, at a kind of basic level you can really kind of write this, this, this computer game and, and see where it can lead us really. And it had some really interesting results, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were just wanting to, in a few weeks, come up with a bit of a taster of how the kids could get to grips with some of the ways that you might want to make a computer game. So a bit of character design, a bit of scripting, and a bit of creating a terrain uh, for the game as well. So we matched that with um, some movement activities, some, um, some activities to do with um, designing a character by hand and using collage and drawing and, and kind of techniques that they already had and they already could use. Hi everyone, um, my name's Kate Hall. I've been working at Ormskirk School for the last four months and I set the students a homework. It's quite an open-ended homework but to think, start thinking about our topic, which we gave to them as journeys, we wanted them to think about the journey from, quite a short journey, but actually quite a lot happens in it, is from the bed in the morning to when they left that front door. And both Steve and I were so impressed, so impressed at the standard of what they produced um, and the variety and the range. I mean, we had things like Henry produced a continuous prose from when he, he as he wrote it down, from when he got out of bed and all the sounds that he heard. And um, what we got to, him to do was when we're showing these homeworks, we got him to um, everyone to close their eyes and for him to read that out, and we were kind of reliving those sounds with him. And it was really interesting. Um, our project was quite student-led. Um, it was with gifted and talented students, um, 15 of them, um, across phase. So they were uh, from age 11 to age 18. Um, initially, I thought that might be a little bit tricky, but they worked really, really well together. We used a system that I have developed. Uh, to allow people to make sound maps, which is where you take uh, a background image and you place different sound sources on top of it. And as the cursor gets near sound sources, they get louder. And as it's to the left, it pans to the left and right. So the, the sound sources act like real sounds. One expression. One expression. One expression. One expression. And it's a nice idea to do it with Ormskirk, where they could choose their own sound, you know, their own images, their own maps, and create their own sound sources completely from scratch. But the after party was great. You got to dance around and you can't help your breath. Basically, I think the most important thing to say about our project was that we used the new media as a tool um, to aid their creativity, and it wasn't a traditional teaching style. Um, we just gave them the tools, and then they went off and expressed their ideas. And this were really fast. They, came, they dealt with some very complex conceptual problems really quickly. Because our girls at St Julie's were very skilled fine artists, our concern was how do we bridge this gap between their fine art skills and working with it within a digital media? We went out into the village, they shot their video, they edited the video, took that video and then printed frames from the video uh, onto paper that the girls were then able to draw the paint onto. pictures with my mates but before we go we like get sweets from the shop because like the sweets are proper dear there. Those don't buy sweets, spangles, five boys, scones, chocolate bars, calvin bowsers, toffees, bark and dobsons, pendles, orms. Right, what we'd like everyone to do in a minute 
is you're all going to act like agents in a computer game, and I'm going to give you some instructions, which are very much like programming, really. And we were trying to introduce to you people this idea that programming, it's not a mad complicated thing, it's, it's giving the computer really simple instructions. Okay, second instruction, try and find someone else in the crowd um, that you are going to follow. Okay, right next, I'd like you to keep following that person, but pick one other person that you're avoiding. So pick someone to avoid. Keep going, keep going, keep going. The reason that we do that is that we try to we try to do movement based activities and programming to say to the kids that you know computers are not very clever, and we use this as an exercise to say that's what happens when a computer crashes. If you give a computer a simple set of instructions, it can follow them beautifully well, really easy, loves it. You know, you start to ask it to do one thing and look at another and do another and do another. As you as you find out yourself, you start to bump into people and you start to stop. And it's one of the best ways that we get you know the the pupils to try and realise that in order to, to build a computer game it has to be A simple, it has to B follow a lot of instructions and it has to C all follow in sequence. So there's like three golden rules and as long as they can remember those three steps they can pretty much build anything that they want to build and they can always refer back to it. So it was really important, first off it was a collaboration properly between myself and Anthony the teacher and then also that the kids had quite a bit of free reign and they, they just had a chance to make mistakes and mess about. They started off with just a blank terrain, just a blank sheet, really blank sheet. And we got them to think about, with the theme of war that we were dealing with, um, No Man's Land. Some of these games you'll see will not necessarily be, you know, like head to toe, perfect faces and perfect bodies. But more, some of them will be like, you know, kind of, you might see a cricket bat as an arm. Or you might see, you know, they, they, they're all kind of, there's a reason behind everything that we've got all the students to run through with us. But we'll, we'll show you a couple of the skins. Yeah. Okay, these are the, these are the skins. Yeah, these, that's the difference. That, that was the original, very nice and cute. That was our young people's one, which is kind of, <laughs> kind of scary. <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of the gist of how the models works. Take a Okay, I'm showing you this. Okay, so we're just going to set it up. Uh, I'm sure there's probably ways around it, I think. And the green, can you map that through on the train? As you can see, when we showed you before, just a normal flat green space land, and someone's managed to create all this in the space of five lessons. It's quite a big thing to do, considering you know only a couple of lessons ago, you know, no one had ever heard or um, done anything to do with the program. And we had some kids that were flying, and then some kids that were really struggling, and it was quite difficult to differentiate properly and cater for that. When we got that to work was when we got. The, the kids that were flying to be actually mentoring the kids that were struggling with it a bit. Um, and I think giving them that ownership over, over kind of, right, I've just discovered something new. Uh, I've, just, I've just found out a new piece of code. And instead of us telling the kids how to do it, we got them to come up to the front of the class and share it with the rest of the kids. Um, I think there was, more, there was more sparks going off on their mind from that than, than us just simply walking through a process which, which will be the same uniformly for, for 100 different kids. I think what we've seen from this, particularly um, for both of our software that uses actually free, so they can be downloading this from the internet and doing it themselves at home, and like I just said, giving them the tools to do it. Um, and, and often they've got, actually got the skills already um, because they might be using their mobile phones, they're really familiar with video games, familiar with photography, so I think it really links in into what they used to. And the next phase of the project that we're going to try and push on is to get them to create a load of video tutorials so that they can introduce Star Logo to groups of younger people. And, and I think the thinking skills they'll develop from having to translate the processes that they now understand into a language which other kids are going to understand is going to help them loads really. Um, and that's how it, can, how it can take on really, I think, if, if, if young people are sharing the knowledge between themselves. Um, yeah, that's, that's how this, it can then just kind of go off in all sorts of directions which neither myself or the teachers can control. Um, and that's the point of it really.